Bien mi gente, bienvenidos al podcast de los Clecas del Deporte En esta ocasión estamos honrados de tener una veterana del equipo nacional Y más que nada de su equipo de las Indias de Mayagüez en el voleibol superior Estamos hablando de la gran Amanda Vázquez Saludos Amanda Hi, hi, everybody eh, Amanda se encuentra ahora mismo bailando hula, ¿no? En Hawái Wow, I danced like when I was nine, <laughs> but I'm in Hawaii. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so, uh, Amanda, let, let's let's start with the start of your career, uh, of your mm -hmm. sports life. Uh, what what was your first sport? My first sport. Well, when I was younger, my parents put me and my sister in swimming. We were in swimming and we were in soccer. So the first team sport that I ever played was soccer um, and that was cool I, I didn't know any other sport but when we got to middle school they didn't have uh, they didn't have a soccer team so we had to pick up another sport and we chose volleyball because we didn't want to run so much anymore so we wasn't going to choose basketball so we started uh, my sister and I we started playing volleyball in middle school at the age of 12. So that was, uh, it was all around the same time. But I originally started playing soccer. So uh, I had some fast feet and run around. Most people don't know that you have a twin sister, but I no. heard <laughs> I heard that she's not as tall as you. So you, you, had, did, you had to look for a sport where both could participate or were you more sports oriented at, than uh, her? So I do have a twin sister. Her name is Tiana, and we're fraternal twins. So we don't look alike. I'm six one, and she's five one. So well, back in the day, this was like a solid 20 years ago. Uh, it was more about participation. So whatever team that we played on, we played together. It didn't necessarily. It wasn't necessarily based on height. We just picked the sport that was convenient for our family and that we enjoyed doing. So we both did swimming, we both did soccer, and we both did volleyball all the way through high school. It wasn't only until after high school that she decided to go more into coaching the sport, and I continued playing. And, and so, you, you never looked into basketball? I did, actually. In high school, since I was like the tallest girl in school my entire life, everybody would come up to me and say, hey, come <laughs> out for the for the basketball team, for the basketball team. But like I said, I didn't want to run that much. <laughs> Running is not my forte. Okay. Uh, so I stuck with volleyball. So that also explains why you, you're... Basketball. That also explains why you're not a libero, right? You don't want to run around the court. Um, so... Um, <laughs> hold on. Let's back it up for a moment there. <laughs> the people that I play with know that I am a libero at heart. I love to run around and go after the ball. Oh, okay. Um, see, little did I know that volleyball involves so much running. In fact, I ran so much in volleyball that I thought maybe I should have picked up basketball because it made more sense. <laughs> so I, I wish I was a libero, and I ended up running a lot anyway, so <laughs> I couldn't avoid that. <laughs> Were you always uh, like a center or blocker, or did you play other positions uh, at, in high school? No, I've always been a middle blocker, always been a middle blocker. Even if I wanted to play any other position, nobody let me. Why? Because I was the tallest girl around. So, always have been a middle blocker. <laughs> so there was a time where, uh, that we, we will get there, we will get there a little bit later. I, I wanted to ask you. Okay. <laughs> But then uh, you went to California to the university. So after, uh, after high school, Uh, my sister and I both played club volleyball, um, but it was just recreational. It's nothing that we took very seriously. But my coach ended up taking me um, on, a, on another team that needed a middle blocker for a tournament. And I went to, I think it was Las Vegas for a tournament, a club tournament. And that's where unexpectedly and to my surprise, a lot of college coaches started to recruit me and that was really overwhelming because it was unexpected. I just went to go, you know, just for the trip. So um, I did get recruited by numerous schools and I ended up deciding to go with the University of California at Irvine. 
So I played um, in the NCAA Division One at Irvine from 2003 to 2006 or 2007, the four years. And that was probably the greatest experience of my life. Who yeah. was the best player there uh, in the years you, you were at UC Ir Irvine? At UC Irvine? So we're not like a, uh, we were never a top 10 Division One school. Uh, my junior and senior year, we ended up making the NCAA tournament, which was the first and second time in school history. So we were doing good um, at the time. And I would say that the best player on our team in terms of recognition had to have been Kelly Wing. Kelly Wing was an outside hitter, and she was our captain, and she took on a lot of responsibility and oh. just... Um, took it like a champ. She actually played in Hong Kong, like in 2008, maybe. So that that's the wrong 2009? answer. That's the wrong answer. The correct answer. The wrong answer? Yeah. The correct answer is Amanda Vasquez. But... Ah, yeah. <laughs> you tricked me. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh, no, they, well, that's <laughs> not an answer I would have given. <laughs> so after, after you finished college, how did you end up in the Puerto Rico Volleyball League? When I was a junior, we went to another tournament somewhere in Texas, and we were just playing, and I didn't know this until later, that somebody had contacted my coach, and they were asking about me because they knew, they found out my last name was Vasquez. So they asked if I was Puerto Rican, um, and then they talked to my coach and eventually found out information that my dad is from Iowa, Puerto Rico, is from Iowa. So... After after I after I graduated college, a couple people, well, actually my senior year, a couple coaches, uh, well, not a couple. I know Carlito Nunez came out, and so did Piripo, and somebody else. I think it was Jaime Lamboy had come to see me at um, UC Irvine play, and they were interested in me coming down to Puerto Rico after I graduated. So it kind of just fell into my lap. It's not something that I really look for. I've been really blessed. And so when I ended up graduating um, from Irvine, my name ended up in the draft. Uh, I think Aguadilla picked me up first and then traded me to Maya West. And that's where I ended up and that's where I stayed. But that that's like a coincidence, right? Because your father is from Maya West, right? So it is a coincidence. Yeah. So I thought that I might have played for even Carolina at first, um, but you know, when your name gets put in the draft, it doesn't always work out how you expect it. So Aguadilla picked me up, traded me to my OS, and that was perfect. I go, okay, I have my cousins, I have my family, well, let's go there. <laughs> so <laughs> Why not? It's it's incredible indeed in this day and age. You've only played for my OS, right? Uh, in, in the I've only played for my OS. And that that's really that's hard on both sides, right? On the team and on your side, that always the interest is there from both sides. And uh, uh, you might yeah. have uh, a lot of records <laughs> playing for the same team. Uh, you went over 2,000 points. Uh, you're in top five in blocks on, on the league. So uh, you, you're not the tallest central blocker, but you've always been effective. Uh, what do you think has been your key to uh, going year in, year out against the best in the league and and holding your own? Uh, holding my own, wow. <laughs> you build me up so much. It's very flattering. It, is, it, is it strange to say an age that a player stays with one team? I guess I've never been the person who defined my success um, by numbers. I've always defined my success by um, commitment, by hard work, by loyalty, by producing. Obviously, this is a professional league. You need to produce, right? And um, I want to say that I don't, I don't have any special tricks up my sleeve to stay consistent and hold my own. But I evolved into the player that I am really when I was in college at Irvine. And I think the biggest thing for me... I would have to say is staying humble, staying very humble and never thinking that you're good enough. I don't know if that's a good thing. It sounds like self-doubt, um, but really thinking that you have to work and you have to play big and you always have to push more. 
um, always trying to be better. I think just remaining humble has been the key to for me being successful and consistent because I've always tried to be better. I never thought I was good enough. You you so won medals. You won medals uh, as part of the national team. Um, you've mm -hmm. won championships in the league, and and always a championship. <laughs> and and always productive, always uh, working hard. Do you see yourself as a leader or as a motivator? I want to say both, but more. I, I would describe my style of leading as leading by action and not so much words. So I feel that if I work really hard and I push myself to be the best that my teammates around me will feel the need, will be motivated to work just as hard. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Um, uh, are, do you think, uh, looking into the future, are you interested in coaching in Puerto Rico? Uh, interested in coaching in Puerto Rico? You know, I always like to leave all my um, options open. Uh, going back to Puerto Rico right now, like I said, I read... Uh, Officially, I don't know, officially, unofficially, but I retired last season and I'm pursuing my master's here. So I'm looking forward to creating a life and settling down here in Hawaii. So, um, so wait, 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 you, you're not coming I mean, back next season? You, you're not coming I back? I am next. not, I'm not coming back next year, although people don't believe me, <laughs> but I, don't, I am I a don't, woman of my word. Yeah, I don't believe you. <laughs> Nobody wants to believe me. Nobody no, but you, you, me, you but. had a great season. Uh, you, you uh, the, the team was not complete, right? And and you still had a great season. Right. Uh, you got to the semifinals. We worked really hard. Yeah, and, and mm -hmm. you gave a lot of battle in, in the playoffs. So uh, people don't expect uh, someone who is not on the decline to retire, right? Do you think yeah. you will receive the call to return? Uh, I already have. <laughs> okay. They they re they refuse to accept my retirement. No, they, we don't. Can, they maintain communication. And other girls have reached out and said, "One more year, come play with me." Um, but I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry, I won't be. I'll, I'll I'm coming back in April for a wedding, uh, my friend's wedding. But I will be at the game. Just, they, uh, sitting they will on make the you play. And yes, yeah, I will be a cheerleader. They will make you play. <laughs> So uh, no, they won't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, have you heard? Uh, like, make a uniform? Yeah, are you you're gonna impact even their right radio commentary? Like they say, they say Amanda uh, de Hoca es la piña hawaiana. Have you have you heard yes. that? <laughs> yes. So uh, you, you, Rafi and Paco, that man. <laughs> <laughs> always make those comments about dando dando la piña or enviando piñas a mi papá. And all those things. So yeah, <laughs> I've heard it. Do you have any message to all the fans that have supported you through all these years? Oh yes. Um, first of all, I appreciate you for your kind words and your your nice comments to my fans that supported me throughout the years. Thank you for those who have just have stuck by me and supported me. It hasn't been a straight line. It's been a roller coaster with highs and lows, and I definitely recognize and appreciate all of those people who were definitely there um, lifting me up when I when I was down. So those are the moments that I cherish the most. And um, everybody's on your side when you win, right? So you really notice the people who are by your side when you don't win. And I appreciate all of you for the support for so many years, for giving me so much cariño. Um, it means a lot to me, and that's the greatest thing that I'll take away from my career in my OS just the love and support consistently for the whole time. I said, let me wait for a little bit later to touch a topic with you. There was a time mm -hmm. where Mara West was missing a corner, right? So they had to move one of the blockers to the corner and they moved channel. Uh, did you want to move to? <laughs> no. No, no you, you I didn't, didn't want to move. Nope. <laughs> I know my limits. I love to play defense, but I know I'm not the best passer. So oh, I'm not yeah. going to pretend that I'm going to go back there and be successful. So <laughs> if they move somebody else, 
fine. I'm comfortable in the middle. I succeed in the middle. It's just fine. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so Amanda, before we leave, you leave. Uh, you have. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a section which is called Click Award, right? So, um, so a click award is something. It doesn't have to be in sports that either frustrates you or or you dislike. Uh, do you have any click award to give out uh, at this time? <laughs> oh, that's a tricky question. Um, I'm not sure why, but I feel like <laughs> I feel like naming Jetta. <laughs> What? <laughs> Sorry. Jetta. I feel like I feel like giving a Kleka award to Jetta. Jetta Bel del Valle. Okay. Yes, girl, I'm talking to you. <laughs> okay, Just why? Just because not for anything that she does. She's one of my best friends and one of the best people I've met in Puerto Rico. Um but she's my bad girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She's my bad girl. And I'm mad that she didn't um, stay with me in Las Indias forever and ever and ever. Oh, um, okay. So, so I'm mad at her for that. So the Clega Award is for, for leaving. Got to go back to <laughs> okay, okay. The Clega Award is for Clega leaving. Her Award yeah. is for leaving me. <laughs> okay, okay. She's supposed to be my partner in crime forever, and she left. <laughs> so, get that. That's for you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there she earned her first click award. <laughs> so, yes, that's so, my girl. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for everything, Amanda. So we hope to to hear more from you and you reconsider uh, for for the joy of the fans. Uh, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me. A todos nuestros oyentes, eh, pueden seguir escuchando este contenido en nuestro canal de YouTube, eh, Los Clecas del Deporte, y nos pueden seguir en Facebook, Twitter, Instagram y todas las redes sociales. Un millón de gracias y bendiciones. <música>